The production process of large stainless steel hollow spheres involves several key stages to ensure a high-quality, seamless finish. First, the stainless steel sheets are cut to size and formed into two hemispheres using specialized pressing machines. These hemispheres are then meticulously welded together by skilled craftsmen, ensuring a smooth joint. Once welded, the seam undergoes a grinding and polishing process to remove any visible traces, creating the seamless appearance characteristic of our patented process. This step is critical to achieve a flawless finish that not only enhances the visual appeal, but also strengthens the overall structure. For customized design requirements, spheres can be fabricated in various sizes and polished to different levels, ranging from matte to mirror finishes. Each sphere is carefully inspected for any imperfections before proceeding to final treatments, which may include additional polishing, surface texturing, or protective coatings to meet design specifications. Mold pressing involves placing a metal blank into a shaped mold and applying high hydraulic pressure to form it into a hemisphere or desired shape. Two hemispheres are then welded together to create a complete hollow sphere, commonly used in manufacturing. Water pressure hydroforming shapes metal by assembling flat or curved segments into a polygonal structure. High pressure water is pumped inside, expanding the metal outward to form a smooth, round sphere. This process reveals any weak welds for repair. Explosive hydroforming uses a small explosive charge inside a water filled metal structure. The explosion forces the metal outward into a spherical shape, offering precise, rapid shaping for large or complex forms. Water pressure hydroforming involves assembling metal segments into a polygonal sphere, then filling the structure with high-pressure water through a connected hose. The internal pressure forces the metal outward, gradually reshaping the polygon into a smooth, round sphere. This method detects weak welds, which are repaired before final surface polishing. Metal sheets are cut into specific shapes for sphere assembly. Flat metal segments are bent into curved shapes for assembly. Curved metal segments are welded together, forming a polygonal sphere. High pressure water is pumped into the polygonal sphere, expanding it to a smooth, round shape and revealing any weld flaws. After expanding the sphere, inspect for holes or gaps in welds, then re-weld these areas to ensure a sealed, smooth surface. Grind down welds to flush them with the surrounding metal surface, smoothing out any irregularities and preparing for further finishing. The surface is ground and sanded with progressively finer abrasives, removing weld marks and imperfections to achieve a smooth, even finish. Polish the surface using various pads, starting with coarse and progressing to fine, to achieve a high-gloss, mirror-like finish. Conduct a thorough final inspection for any remaining imperfections, then use a hand polisher to perfect the sphere's surface shine. The round bar material is carefully inspected upon arrival to ensure it meets quality standards. It is then fed into an automatic cutting machine, where it is precisely measured and cut to the specified length required for the forging process, ensuring uniformity. The cut material is inserted into a hopper to be sent to the gas heating furnace. The cut material is lifted from the hopper using an automated system and efficiently transported via conveyor to the gas heating furnace for further processing. The aligned cut materials are moved into the gas heating furnace, where they are uniformly heated to the precise forging temperature. Once heated to the specified temperature, the material is carefully positioned in the die at the designated location. The hot forging process then begins, where high pressure is applied to shape the material. Simultaneously, hole punching is performed, ensuring precise dimensions and structural integrity for further processing. 
The material, heated in a high-frequency induction electric furnace, is grasped by a robotic arm. The heated material is inserted into the die, where unmanned hot forging is performed. The forged products are air-cooled until they reach room temperature. The press is equipped with a punching die to remove unnecessary burrs. To remove release agents and oxidized surface layers, scale, the products are placed into a shot blasting machine. Stainless steel shot material, about 0.5 mm in size, is rotated and projected onto the surface. The appearance of the shot blasted, forged products is inspected visually for every item. Stainless steel sphere manufacturing is a highly specialized process which focuses on the export trade and stainless steel decorative markets. Based in Guangdong, this emerging enterprise operates with advanced technology, including automatic welding and semi-automatic polishing, ensuring high-quality production standards. Their manufacturing facilities span 1,200 square meters, housing equipment valued at around 30 million RMB. This allows for a monthly production capacity of up to 50,000 units, with sphere diameters ranging from 19 millimeters to 5,000 millimeters. The stainless steel spheres are widely used for various decorative purposes, including festive decorations, such as Christmas and weddings, as well as urban landscaping, park sculptures, and water fountains. These products showcase a fusion of cultural styles, reflecting the company's emphasis on creativity and innovation. An automatic hot stamping machine line designed for stamping hexagonal tubes offers a highly efficient and precise solution for forming metal parts, particularly for applications such as automotive components, structural elements, and specialized industries. This line operates with a capacity ranging from 400 to 2,500 tons, providing a wide range of force suitable for shaping high-strength materials. The machine integrates advanced automation features, including robotic material handling, precise temperature control systems, and programmable stamping sequences. These features enable high-speed production with minimal manual intervention, ensuring consistency and quality across large-scale production runs. The process involves heating the metal tubes to a precise temperature, followed by a controlled stamping operation that shapes the material into hexagonal profiles. In the first step, the iron bar material is measured precisely to ensure the correct length for forging. This involves using cutting tools like saws or shears to achieve clean, accurate cuts. In the second step, the iron bar is heated in a furnace to 1,200 degrees Celsius, the optimal temperature for forging. At this high temperature, the metal becomes more malleable, allowing it to be easily deformed without cracking or breaking. Uniform heating is crucial to ensure consistent workability throughout the material. Place the material into a mold and shape it with a force of 4,000 tons. Once the rough shape is formed using the first mold, the material is transferred to a second mold. This mold refines finer details, enhancing precision and ensuring the final shape meets specifications. Remove excess material and slowly cool it to prevent deformation, completing the rough material. Perform machining and heat treatment to finish the product. Forging the S45C flange. Heat the S45C steel and shape it by repeatedly hammering to achieve the desired flange form. Tapering the end to fit into the mold. The heated S45C steel is carefully shaped by gradually reducing the thickness at one end creating a tapered section that can be easily inserted into the mold. Using a support to prevent over-flattening, 
a specialized support is placed under the workpiece to maintain its thickness and avoid excessive flattening during forging. Hammering into the mold. Once the steel is tapered and positioned, it is placed into the mold. Using precise controlled hammering, the heated steel is gradually shaped to conform to the mold's contours, ensuring even distribution and a consistent flange form. Five X speed demonstration. The forging process is typically time consuming, requiring careful attention to detail at each step. To provide an overview, the demonstration video is shown at 5x the normal speed. This accelerated playback highlights the key stages from initial shaping to final forming, offering a quick yet comprehensive view of the forging process while still showcasing the precision and craftsmanship involved. Shaping the workpiece. After initial forging, the workpiece is refined by further hammering and adjusting. This process ensures that it achieves the exact dimensions and contours required for the final flange design. Final forming to remove surface irregularities. In this stage, the workpiece undergoes final adjustments to smooth out any surface imperfections and irregularities. This involves precise grinding or finishing techniques to ensure a flawless surface, achieving the required aesthetic and functional quality before the flange is deemed complete. Measuring dimensions and the process is complete. The forging process involves shaping metal by applying compressive forces using tools or machinery. It is a key method in metalworking that enhances the strength and durability of the material. Forging can be performed hot or cold, with hot forging being more common as it involves heating the metal to a temperature that makes it more malleable. A 2.5-ton air hammer, the single-frame air hammer OSF-250, is a specific type of forging equipment used in this process. This hammer operates using compressed air to deliver powerful blows to the metal, shaping it through repeated impacts. The single-frame design of the OSF-250 provides stability and reduces vibration, improving precision and control during forging. The 2.5-ton capacity in indicates the maximum force the hammer can exert, making it suitable for medium to large-scale forging tasks. Upsetting forgings using a CNC hydraulic die forging hammer represents a sophisticated process in precision metalworking, involving several key components and machinery. The CNC hydraulic die forging hammer is integral to this process as it enables the precise application of force to shape metal billets into complex forgings. This hammer provides consistent and controlled impacts, which are crucial for achieving the desired dimensional accuracy and mechanical properties of the forged components. In addition to the hammer, key wedge drivers play a critical role by maneuvering the forging die's keys in and out these drivers ensure that the dies are correctly positioned and locked, facilitating accurate forging operations. Before the hot die forging process begins, billet preforming is essential to prepare the metal for final shaping. This is achieved through the use of a forging roll machine and a cross wedge roll machine. The forging roll machine helps in shaping the billets into a preliminary form, improving their workability. Similarly, the cross wedge roll machine further refines the billet, making it more amenable to the final forging operation. Since 1971, Areta's Nuclear and Heavy Equipment Division has pioneered the R&D and manufacturing of large, seamless rolled ring forgings, leading the industry with cutting-edge technology and precision. The natural gas furnace, with a 500-ton loading capacity and dimensions of 10,000 mm by 8,000 mm by 4,500 mm, ensures efficient, large-scale heat treatment. The 13,500-ton press features a pressure capacity of 13,500 tons, a headroom of 7,000 mm, and an opening of 5,800 mm, enabling the forging of large, high-precision components. 
The 16-meter diameter ring rolling mill can handle rings up to 16,000 millimeters in diameter and 3,000 millimeters in height. It's ideal for producing high-value components like the $14,000 F316H reactor support ring. The Coke Tower Transition Segment, measuring 9,000 mm by 700 mm and weighing 54 tons, is crafted from 14 CR1 Mo. Additionally, the rotary kiln rim, 7,500 mm by 6,200 mm by 1,500 mm, weighs 156 tons and uses 28 MN6 steel. The pit resistance furnace, measuring 12,500 mm by 13,000 mm by 1,800 mm, ensures precise heat treatment with temperature uniformity of plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius, supported by quenching baths of 19,000 mm by 5,000 mm. The 2.5 meters vertical CNC lathe offers a maximum turning diameter of 12,500 millimeters, while the 16 meters vertical lathe handles up to 16,000 millimeters in diameter and 3,500 millimeters in height. The 7 meters drilling center provides 80 millimeters drilling capacity. Ultrasonic testing uses high-frequency sound waves to detect internal flaws, cracks, and imperfections in forgings. It ensures precision, reliability, and compliance with stringent quality standards, providing non-destructive inspection of critical components. One, metal forming machine. The process begins with aluminum sheets that are fed into a metal forming machine. Here, the aluminum is pressed or drawn into a cylindrical shape. This involves deep drawing and ironing processes to create a seamless bottle body with uniform thickness. The metal is stretched and formed into its initial bottle-like shape. The necking process is a critical step in manufacturing metal bottles, particularly aluminum bottles, as it shapes the upper portion where the cap will fit. Once the basic bottle body is formed, the bottle enters the necking machine. This machine reduces the diameter of the bottle's upper section, gradually forming the characteristic narrow neck. Typically, the necking operation is divided into multiple stages. Rather than reducing the diameter in one go, the machine performs the reduction in small, incremental steps. This is necessary to ensure that the bottle's body retains its integrity and shape. A sudden or single stage reduction would cause crimping, cracking, or warping of the metal. By gradually reducing the size of the neck through several stages, the metal flows smoothly without generating too much stress or thinning in any one area. Each stage of the necking process is controlled with extreme precision using custom-designed dies, which guide the metal into the desired shape. Next, the screw threads are added to the neck of the bottle using a screw machine. This machine precisely cuts or presses the screw threads into the neck area, allowing the bottle to be securely sealed with a cap. Ensuring the accuracy of the screw is essential for maintaining a good seal and ensuring compatibility with the caps.